Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with the Data Dog. Um, and today, what we're gonna be talking about uh, is a new tool that I've just started to see come up more and more, um, both my work and you know, on LinkedIn, all the influencers are talking about it. Um, so I figured it would be worth just kind of covering in more of a getting started video, uh, and that is Starburst. Um, so just like what Piglet likes to eat, uh, Starburst <laughs> is nothing like the candy. Uh, it is actually an enterprise distribution of open source Trino, which was formerly known as Presto SQL Query Engine, uh, which is designed to really facilitate fast and scalable data analytics across a variety of data sources. Um, so it's really kind of a structured query language that is specialized just for analytics rather than regular SQL, which can be used for analytics, but is typically more for kind of the data engineering work. Um, and so Starburst aims to uh, enhance Trino's capabilities and kind of build on top of it by providing additional features, number one, such as like security, connectivity, kind of having a more out of the box solution with management tools tailored for enterprise needs. Um, and in this kind of sense, it really enables users to perform interactive ad hoc queries uh, and ad hoc analytics on large volumes of data distributed across many different databases, data lakes, uh, data warehouses without needing to move the data between all those different data warehouses. So kind of breaking down the silos, but not actually needing you to then bring all the data into a new platform. Um, and this just you know, obviously has a lot of benefits by allowing you to query the data where it lives, but still maintaining the ability to connect to a variety of different data sources and perform analytics across them. So you can get those kind of deeper level insights. Um, and this obviously allows organizations to really execute complex queries across their entire data ecosystem and also leverage the power of distributed computing by not having to put that computing load all on one individual system um, and allow it to access and analyze data where it resides. Um, by offering you know, a unified platform for data access and analytics, Starburst has really kind of played a role in simplifying data architecture for a lot of companies um, and improving data analysis efficiency. Um, so now that you kind of have just a quick high level view of, you know, what Starburst is, I want to take you through just kind of getting started with it. Uh, I'll do some basic queries, set up some uh, basic data and, and just give you the basics of how you can get started using Starburst for your particular use case. Um, so I'm going to hit get start free, fill out this form. Um, so you can do a free trial. So if you want to follow along, go for it. Um, and after Brent filling this out, I'll uh, pause and unpause there. So here in the uh, Starburst, da Starburst dashboard, uh, what we're going to want to do is first just uh, actually connect some data. So looking to go fast, um, create a catalog. And here uh, you can see I have different catalogs uh, for configuration of how to connect to different data sources. Uh, so this kind of takes away a little bit of the complexity of saying, hey, I need to figure out how to ingest this certain type of data. Uh, Starburst offers the ability to just kind of use these pre-built connectors uh, to actually attach your data and you know query it. So to actually add some new data, what we'll need to do is create a new catalog, um, and then you can connect to you know any of your object storage options, different uh, databases, Sandra, ClickHouse, MariaDB, uh, Snowflake, all the classics. Um, and just for ease of use today, what I'm going to do um, is just and sorry, I don't know why this is forced me to go in S3, um, is just connect to this COVID-19 uh, data lake. Um, since I don't want to have to pay for data lake myself, um, but here let's create a namespace. So first, uh, let's just go GY catalog dot GY schema dot GY table. Um, let's start with letter and only use the trees. Gotcha. Okay, so here let's just do GY catalog. So you don't actually enter the schema table name within here, just your catalog name. Um, first catalog, and then we'll hit connect catalog. And um, what this will do is connect to this data lake, which contains information on COVID-19 data, um, and then will allow me to then query it. So here I'm just going to leave the access roles the same, save these access controls since it's just me using it. Don't need to get fancy with it, and then add it to a cluster. Um, so here we have this free cluster. So this is how you're actually going to be running the compute uh, and running the queries within Starburst is you'll need to have different uh, clusters. So before I query my data, um, I'll actually tab out two clusters here. So here, you know, it comes with a free cluster that you can use. See the kind of configuration here. Um, and it'll also show you what catalogs are available on this cluster. But to create a cluster, you'll just go into create cluster, new cluster. Uh, and then choose whatever catalogs you want this cluster to be able to power. Um, so I'll just connect to GY catalog, 
cloud provider region, US East. Um, and then here we have different execution modes. So standard, best for ad hoc querying, fault tolerant for when you need to do really resource intensive queries and accelerated with uh, some fancy warp speed indexing and caching layer. So they're really leaning into the uh, star versus astro or kind of space theme, uh, similar to astronomer. Um, but we'll just leave it as standard for now. We don't need to get anything fancy. And then we can set the uh, scaling bounds, auto suspend. So similar to you know how a smart cluster will auto suspend after you're done with it. And then also choose the cluster size. Um, and then you can also specify roles to which, which can access this cluster as well. We'll just leave it as public for now. Um, then once we've created a cluster, don't necessarily need to have it enabled now, just wanted to you know, actually create one, we can go to query and start querying our data. Um, so here we can create a query. And I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see the smaller text um, where you see here, I can write my query. So let's say I want to select customer name, last day of country from a sample burst bank database dot customer limit 10. Um, and then I want a join statement to join the customer data and the accounting data for particular customers. You can see ACCC. Um, and let's run this and see what we get. Uh, so here it's queued, and then it will be assigned to that free cluster, just off of some sample data. And then Burst Bank is the schema that it's actually in. And then here you can see we have our data query visualized right here below. And um, you can see the different customer information, customer keys, credit card status, if they have an open credit card or not. Um, and then what we can do is also create a data product. Uh, if we want to download the results as a CSV, just hit that button over there. Um, and your results will be downloaded as a CSV, as you see here. You could also see the execution details in Trino. So if you're interested in seeing what happened under the hood uh, with the actual Trino uh, underlying open source product, you can see that here, you know, this is the different query information, resource utilization summary, uh, parallelism, and obviously not super important in optimizing when you're at such a small scale and just testing it out. But once you do get to large scale queries, optimizing them for the most efficient compute usage can be really important because it can mean you know saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars in you know over the a month right um then what we'll do is create a data product so data products this is something that's uh pretty popular in the data space right now it's kind of having data driven applications where really it's just you know hey a visualization dashboard off of um let's just create schema uh data product is those um, and then essentially the idea is, hey, you know, most products are really just data visualized in different ways. So let's just call this UI product first, data product, and then save and continue. Um, and Starburst, in keeping with that kind of new paradigm, um, allows you to, please add link to our, allows you to create your own data products just within the actual platform. So here, first product ui.com saving continue um, i doubt this is going to work but because i don't have a valid url um, so you would need to oh then context so there we go um let's see if this works g8.com or let's go www yeah so you do need to have a actual place to host it so small downside there uh, i don't have a place to host it but just wanted to give you a sense like, hey, this is, you know, some of the capabilities of Starburst here as well. Um, you also, if I want to query my sample data, um, maybe I want to switch from that disperse bank data to my data that I just got out of that uh, snow or the, sorry, the COVID data set. Um, so here we have our G8 schema, no contents in there. So let's write our own query here. So our G8 catalog, or G8 schema. Um, and then what we'll do is just select uh, all from my table name, limit it to 10, and we have failed. Awesome. So let's see if the information schema works better. Oh, wait, that's right. Haha. -ha. Need to actually have the table name in here. Um, so one second. So here we're just querying a list of all the different tables that are contained within this information schema. Um, and then if we want to Let's just go to our GA's catalog um, or query first from sample. Uh, so we are sample and then let's go into the demo schema. And I'm curious about what astronauts contains. So let's run from astronauts limit 10, just the first 10. Oh, and shocker, it has the different names of different astronauts uh, that got to 
uh, the moon, so or just got out into space. So your birth, military civilian, shocker, all the uh, USSR ones are military. Um, you see the selection, your selection, mission number. Wow, a lot of good information here. Occupation, year of mission, mission title, ascent shuttle, in orbit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so the advantage here of like over other query engines is that this allows you to connect to really any other um, data source and then also bring it all together into one product, which is Starburst. Um, and that's kind of the real benefit, I would say, here versus using the native tools like running your query directly in Snowflake. Starburst is really going to be valuable for you if you have data across many different databases, many different data products, but you want to have one single source where you can query across all of that different data. Obviously, if all your data is in Snowflake or all your data is in another database that you, know, you just can write your queries directly in there, will probably be more efficient and easier to use uh, than connecting it all into Starburst. But where Starburst advantage comes from is the ability to kind of query multiple databases of different types all at the same time and then bring them all into kind of one data product. Um, and then also within this Partner Connect, you also have the option to uh, then pipe that information out into whatever business intelligence tool you're using. So we got Tableau, Power BI, Looker, uh, data integration tools for if you want to use DBT here. And they're really just trying to aim to be in my in my eyes um kind of the central collection point of all your data that you can you know just come in here write queries whether it's in my uh you know amazon database whether it's in some just text database catalog whether it's in a gcs bucket um and just having a single cloud and database agnostic tool uh, to do all that um so i hope this has been a helpful video for getting you started with starburst and understanding you know kind of just the basics of how it works uh, if you'd like me to keep making more videos on starburst please let me know and I will. Uh, but of all else, have a good one. Data guy out.